Evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode six of the Bronze Age. If you haven't joined me before, uh, we try to give kind of basic foundation level information um, gleaned from learning experiences we have while watching uh, user submitted Hero League games from bronze and silver for replay analysis. So today we have a Towers of Doom game. Uh, I think it's our first support player, no second, we had a Lili. So our first time with Ariel, uh, it, according to my notes, it is a bronze level game. So we'll jump right into it. Um, I do not watch these ahead of time, so we're all going to experience this together for the first time. They randomly played uh, Danger Zone on the radio on the way home, so now I'm all fired up and ready to do some heroes. Normally I do this Monday night um, at 5.30, but Halloween was yesterday. Take the little one trick-or-treating, so we bumped it a day. I won't be doing this next week because I'll be out of town, but the following week I will be doing two so we can uh, play catch-up a little bit. So no stream next week, but in two weeks we will have back-to-back -back replays. So Goldfish is our hero this game, playing Ariel on Towers of Doom. One of the things, oh, let's change that volume. Every time we load into a replay on an older patch, for some reason the volume is always really high. So that seems a little bit better. Holy moly. All right, so here's our Ariel, Goldfish on Ariel. One of the things you need to do um, as a healer when you're looking at your team, let's figure out who needs the most attention. In this comp, it's gonna be Kerrigan. Um, a lot of the time, it's your melee assassin. Kerrigan in particular though is divey and um, gets a lot of attention. So your number one priority this game should be keeping Kerrigan going. Mm, number two would be Alarak. Muradin should get almost no none of your attention as a healer unless you're going to prevent him from dying. And Chromie, when played correctly, uh, should not be close enough to take damage. Especially in this particular game, if we look at the opposition team, they have zero dive that you need to worry about with Chromie. So with this team, Chromie should really be pretty safe a lot of the time. Um, she should be playing far enough back to where it shouldn't be a problem. So as Ariel, our number one priority this game will be uh, babysitting Kerrigan, and our number two priority will be babysitting Alarak. And the other thing that we need to be aware of on Ariel is who we're going to put our crown on. Now, when I play Ariel, I like to try to leave it on one person, but the ideal way to do it in this case would be you put your crown on Chromie right before he throws it, she throws out her W, and then you put it back on somebody else who has more sustained damage. Um, so Chromie and Alarak, I think, are probably going to be your highest volume damage dealers this game. And, of course, Ariel needs damage to generate energy for healing. So let's see who she chooses to put the crown on. And something else to be aware of, Ariel's weakness as a healer is she does not have cleanse. So that could be a bit of a problem when you look at Zul and Jaina on the other team, Johanna to a lesser extent. Really, Zul is who we're looking at here. So this is for Ariel's teammates. They need to be aware that their healer does not have cleanse. And Jaina and Zul is a really potent combination. I love playing uh, with a Zul on my team when I'm Jaina because I almost hold my blizzards um, for the bone prism. You can time your whole combo based on that bone prism. It puts a huge bullseye on whoever Zul targets. All right, so it looks like we're gonna go do our little five on five mid lane skirmish here. So goldfish. Now ideally we would want our tank out in front of here. But, okay, so you choose Alarak for the crown, not a bad selection. Babysit this Kerrigan, that's your target there. Looks like you just blew your energy on uh, Alarak. So when you have a choice, let's go back just a tiny bit. That's actually a nice little learning opportunity there. Yeah. 
so we're gonna put our crown on Alarak and our sh we will watch our energy it'll fill up pretty quick it gets to about two-thirds here really fast Look how fast that's going on okay now let's let's see where we use it this is uh, one of those things where even though Alarak is at lower life he's in a safer position than a rooted Kerrigan so I would like to see this heal gone onto the Kerrigan it looks like yeah so you put it there on Alarak but look Alarak's already safely getting away so the uh, target here Alarak's healed but he's already getting away hey Kodatias how are you man but Kerrigan on the other hand is in a world of trouble here she's bone prismed with four people on top of her already so that heal should have definitely gone to Kerrigan Oh, that's really dangerous. That's really, really dangerous. Rotate safely around. One of the things Ariel does really well as a healer is she actually gives has a little bit of peel with her uh, knockback detaining strike. So keep that in mind too. When you're trying to protect people, you can peel a little bit for them as well. So definitely we want to focus on uh, target prioritization here so far. And of course with Ariel, um, obviously you want to hit group targets, right? She has an area of effect heal. But like I said, remember right in the beginning, um, <clears throat> Kerrigan and Alarak are the two number one targets. More Kerrigan, um, but Alarak here just got caught in a terrible position and blown up. Really now I don't see a crown on anybody right now. So that's a problem. If we have no crown, that's a mistake. We need to have the crown on somebody so you're generating energy. There it is. Okay, now you put the crown on Kerrigan and then left the lane, which isn't a problem. Just remember, as soon as somebody joins you down here, to put that crown down. There you go, perfect. See right there, that's that's a little bit of a wasted heal. Shade doesn't need to be topped off because uh, Alarak does have some self-sustain. What I like to do on Ariel, if you can, is when you're going to go into a situation that you know there's going to be a team fight, go in there with your energy filled up already, or at least you know some of it in there, so you have a heal ready to go when the fight starts. You don't have to wait for the damage to go out before you can actually heal. So this is a good time to build up that energy for the first um, shrine phase that's coming up. Since Alarak has a little bit of self-sustain, you don't need to keep him 100% topped off. If he's at 70% you know, 70 life, that's fine. So build up that energy level so that way you have a heal ready for when the fight breaks out. Nice. Oh, that would have been... <clears throat> that actually, Detaining Strike might have resulted in a kill if you had managed to get him into the tower. You ju just missed, though. Just missed. And that, I think... I think the two hardest things about Ariel, to be honest, is, is number one, the hardest thing is balancing the crown. Uh, balancing the crown. Um, if you do it correctly, you're, up, you're moving it around a lot, and that's not easy to do. Um... And number two is really finding the angles for that detainment strike is an art. And if you get really good at that detainment strike, it's, it's a big, big bonus. <clears throat> yeah, it, that's not a big deal. It, and she was so low on life, you might have killed it anyway. So, I mean, that, that happens. But at least you acknowledged your teammate, you know, my bad. No, no, this is ours. And okay, so your team is laying out a plan here. You're going to get this top right one and the bottom one. Remember, though, you're a support hero. You can't support anybody if you're not near them. So I would try to stay near Alarak here. There you go. So it looks like you guys are going to have a 3 on 3 top and a 2 on 2 bottom. Nope, Azul left. So you guys absolutely need to win this. So your angle right there, by the way, was the detainment strike into the channel there. 
And the proper way to do this actually is a uh, shade should be zoning out for you while you channel. I mean, you guys have it backwards. It's not that big a deal. Detaining strike him away. Keep him away. No, 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 no. Okay, so you're kind of hiding in the bushes here, but that doesn't accomplish anything. If you're going to keep Falstad away, stay visible so he knows to stay away. So instead of hiding here in the bushes, be up in here. He's, he's like, he's half dead. He's not coming in. Stay right here. Let him know you're here. Let him know he's not welcome. By staying in the bushes, you allowed him to interrupt that channel. Stay loud. Let Falstad know you're there. I am and it will not be from me. And now you guys all need to rotate up here for this little team fight. Well, your team lost Chromie, but they are all really, really low. Oh, that's not a good storm bolt. Okay, now it's lost, so everybody should just be backing up. Just back it up. One of the things I would consider at level, I don't usually do build stuff, but I, I keep looking at it, so I may as well say, if, if you determine in the beginning of the game, like I did this game, that the majority of your healing is going to be spent on a melee assassin, I would strongly consider the level 1 talent that the healing also does damage. That way, every time you heal the melee assassin in combat, you're actually damaging their opponent, your opponent as well. Um, you'd be surprised how much damage you can put out with that uh, damaging talent at 1. That You don't want to turn your heal into a damage output. But if you're going to be focusing on melee assassin characters anyway, and you're going to be healing them while they're in melee range, that means your heal is automatically becoming a damage dealing tool. So, something to consider at level 1 with Ariel. This is when you can use your Detainment Strike as appeal, right here. Whip him back, whip him back. Nice job getting Alarak out of lock. Now, our blue team is being silly here because they are missing two lanes worth of so. Oh, I thought Chromie was soloing that. I was like, that would have been really silly too. So always be watching that minimap. Minimap awareness is so important. And that's one of the things that I found is a big deal. See, Kerrigan's going to die here. I would be very surprised if Kerrigan did not die here. Or if our Johanna knew what to do there. But nice rotation coming to help Kerrigan out. Now, wait, oh, that was your chance right there. Oh, a half a second earlier, you put Lili into this house here. You might have killed Lili. Follow up on, use, use your, your stun as a follow up stun. I'd like to see you a little more aggressive, Goldfish, with that detainment strike. It's a little bit more aggressive. But nice job, good rotation. You put a lot of pressure on them. And this is excellent. If you've watched my streams in the past on the Bronze Age, I harp a lot about going to objectives with high health and high mana. You have to go down there being ready to go. So you guys driving the enemy so far back like this with such low life leaves them low on resources for this objective. So that's a very good thing. Okay, but this, do not do this, people. The objective pops, so you hearth back. So Kerrigan is essentially leaving you guys to try to fight this five on four. Do not do that. The time to hearth is not right when the objective pops. The time to hearth is before the objective pops. You want to be ready and waiting for the objective. The objective will not wait for you. See now, in, the, in a perfect world, you're here as soon as the objective pops. You're, you are, Goldfish. That's very dangerous, though. That's really dangerous. And that's exactly why. Good heal. Man, these, these fights are all over the place. They're kind of sloppy. Let's, let's go over that a little bit. That felt really, really disjointed. All right, so first things first, let's talk about team formation. 
What Goldfish is doing here is called anchoring, and that's what the there's what the tank should be doing. This Muradin should be over here, not down here. In a team fight, if you're going to try to channel an objective during the team fight, it needs to be one of the backliners that does it. Um, probably the healer. So I want to see Muradin up here. Now Goldfish can't do anything about that, right? But let's let's go to um, Ariel's vision here. Okay, here's Ariel's vision. So when does Ariel blow out of here, right? Okay, Johanna's coming right at you. Wait, wait, wait. Earlier. So right about here, that's that's your cue to leave. I mean, I know, uh, yeah, there's no reason for you to stay there. And Falstad's going to make your, make this even worse. So we don't want to take free damage. You've done your job. You let, the, you let your teammates know that they were coming. So this is your cue to leave. Muradin is not doing you guys any favors the tank in the back line that the tank needs to be up here up here so now you get driven out of here hard because there's three of them and one of you and our alarak tries to flank let's see what our muradin does okay so you're gonna get you see even still look at look at how close they get before you finally leave you're just taking a ton of free damage so now muradin finally decides to come up here this is a shot chromie needs to hit by the way and she whiffed entirely. Um, we've talked about this a lot as well in the past. Kyle Ferguson talks about this too. Try to get a feel for your teammates. Learn which ones you can and can't count on. Um, it's easier to do it when your teammates are playing heroes you're familiar with. I'm pretty familiar with Chromie. If this were a Chromie on my team, that would not endear a lot of confidence to me. But basically, Goldfish, your, your half health there was 100% from just standing in those bushes too long. And Alarak coming to save you actually did him no favors as well. Luckily, our Kerrigan is here. Better late than never. See, look look at where their, their Johanna is relative to where Muradin was. Johanna right in the front here. Nice, solid tank. Oh, and the Blizzard is going to do you in. Let's see what kills you. So, Kerrigan jumps on Jaina. Oh, what? Okay, see... I mean, there's a fine line between turning around, but there's you couldn't you can't you couldn't turn around there. Your health was way too low. Well, not only was your health too low, but your heals were too low too. You're probably not gonna save Alarak. Nope. So you turned around to try to save Alarak, and both of you got dead. That's one of those situations where you just gotta cut your losses and get out of there. This is something we see in bronze and silver a lot too. Red team should not be fighting this anymore. They're four on three. You're five minutes into the game. Just let the shrine go. There's no harm in that. Just let it go. That's a nice shot by Chromie. Oh, nice pick by their Kerrigan staying way too long, but we got Zul and Falstad out of it. Kerrigan's still going. I am flabbergasted that that went how it is. But look, there is no way that was going to go better for Red Team, right? There's no way that whole situation was going to go better for Red Team. So that went as good as it could have possibly went, and they're still not going to get the Shrine. So once again, it's like everything to lose and nothing to gain. Why is Chromie still here? Thank you. Yeah, that, I mean, that's just feeding, free deaths. Right here, Goldfish, just ping retreat. They have all five up. You are too. I know they're low on life. If Alarak gets a sweet pick on Jaina here, if he pulls her in here and you can whip her into the wall, maybe you get a pick. But this is really flirting with trouble here. See, and that's not... Alarak, you don't need to do that to Johanna. Don't waste your stuff on Johanna like that. You want to use that on a squishy. You've got the right idea. Get out. Your, your Alarak's going to die here. I would be very surprised if he did not die. Nice detainment strike, good peel for him. Wow, they're... <laughs> oh, man. They're false. The false dad literally just stood there the whole time and took everybody's damage. I don't think I've seen that before. Wow. Alright, so here's false dad. Let's watch false dad. 
So this is going to work out okay for you guys, even though you should have left. Chaina completely whiffs on a blizzard. Let's watch this fall stat here. He literally... This is why you stutter step, by the way. Watch. And he literally... He literally stands here and just takes everybody's damage. You cannot do that. So stutter stepping is auto attacking and then moving and then auto attacking and then moving and then auto attacking and then moving. It's one of the really <clears throat> quick and dirty ways you can tell um, kind of how experienced a player is in this game. So that false step by not stutter stepping by just standing there and auto attacking repeatedly is a you know a giveaway that he lacks experience. So this worked out okay for you guys. Um, it, later in the game, later in the game it wouldn't because the death timers are much later. But so far so good. Some um, shaky decision making on both sides, I would say. But you guys got it. You evened up the game. You're actually about a full level ahead right now. This is not a bad decision, and you know you, you look like you wanted to anchor there. That's fine too. That was a way. Okay, resources. That if you're a Chromie player, that W was completely unnecessary, and you just kind of wasted a really high cooldown talent. You know, certain certain talents like um, Blizzard on Jaina and Chromie's W, you don't want to waste them for no good reason. Maybe you guys should all be turning on Zul. Every single one of you should be turning back on Zul. Right? You guys want to make sure you're not giving up any soak. Hopefully you guys get a false stat pick here, though. So this is a mistake. <clears throat> so Goldfish, your whole team is rotating up here, and you're trying to pick off false stat. There, the two ways you get picks are is if a player feels safe or if he doesn't see a rotation coming. Your Alarak and your Muradin, who are your lockdowns as well as you, we're going around the backside to come here on Falstad. By you showing early, you scared him off. So you should have waited. Yeah. Now, you might get him anyway. Ideally, though, you, uh, you go with them. Back this way. And then the three of you jump on him at the same time when he's still over here. So when, when, you, when you've got teammates coming and you're trying to get a pick, don't scare your prey off. Make sure you get him. And furthermore, you should be up there now with them, trying to help pick them off. Well, there you go. So don't scare the fishes, guys. When you're trying to get that pick, don't scare off the fishes. Now, they're pushing hard mid here. Rising heroes. You guys should be able to get a pick here if you rotate hard enough, fast enough. On false stab. That's a night. Okay. <laughs> that was a really good detainment strike. Um, but anytime you use CC on Johanna, it's almost always wasted. I would have preferred to hold on to it and see if you can use it to sink your teeth into a Jaina or a false stab, right? Really try to save the CC for punishing the enemy team's squishy characters when they get out of position. It was a, it was a great shot. It's just it, probably nothing's going to come of it. So try to save those CCs for the squishy characters if you can. <laughs> nice. That's a good team fight. It's right here. Hit it. You. No, no, no. Oh. You're waiting, yeah, you're waiting too long on those heals. You want to catch it. You guys were so grouped up, you could have kept keeping catching everybody in it. But nice job keeping everybody up. Well played. This is too early for a boss call, probably. And I'll show you why. One, their whole team's going to be up in basically 10 seconds. And two, Muradin has about half health. He'll heal up, but no mana. 
Chromie contributes basically nothing to bosses because of her Q talent. Doesn't hurt anything other than heroes. And she has no mana anyway. And your Alarak is way down here. Low health, low mana. This is a very ballsy boss call. And the only way you guys could pull it off is if everybody went up there right now. But with Alarak so far bottom, I don't think you guys would be able to get this. Look, they're all up. You guys haven't even started up. Their whole team is up in six seconds. Okay, this is a big deal. <clears throat> so if the other team catches wind that you guys are doing the boss and they invade, they're going to come through this bushes here. They're going to come through here. So you're the healer. You don't want to be the person that catches the enemy team. You want Muradin to catch the enemy team. That means you need to be over here. So when they go through these bushes, they hit Muradin first, and you're safely tucked away on this other side. Now, if you were the team's tank, you're in the primo position because you want to make sure that you're the guy that catches the enemy team if they invade. So squishy characters over here on the safe side, tanks and maybe beefier melee assassins over here on the aggressive side. See, and that's even worse, because now <laughs> Muradin has left you all by himself. If the enemy team invades, you get blown up. Remember I told you this was too early, look at this. Yeah, you, can, you can't keep up with the damage. This boss, this boss in particular, hits like a freight train. It does a ton of damage. You guys barely have it at half-half health. The entire enemy team is up, and I think your Muradin and your Alarak are closer to dying than the boss is right now. That heal needed to hit both of those guys. You need to make sure you hit both of those guys with that heal. You only got the Murd in there. And... See, I mean, you guys, I told you, it's too early. You can't do it. Yeah. Falstad's gonna come in here and clean up. You guys just get that. And that's exactly, that is exactly why I disliked that boss call in the first place. I said the only way you get it is if everybody comes up oh, up there. Not only did everybody come up there, you guys took so long to do it and Muradin and Kael'tha or and uh, Alarak basically died in it and you just gifted the enemy team the boss. That was just not a good strategic shot call. What's now Muradin? Did... So we're going to learn from Muradin there. Learn to cut your losses. Muradin had zero, zero, zero chance to prevent that boss capture. Just leave. The number, if you guys watch pro games, um, here's the Storm games, the number one thing I've learned, and I think the number one thing that a casual player can take away from watching the pro teams is how often they give up objectives or give up bosses. If, they're, if you're at a disadvantage or it's clear that it's not going to go your way, unless the game will actually be over, just leave. Right? Just leave. Because now instead of them getting the boss, they get the boss and a free kill on Muradin. They were going to get the boss anyway. Why give them the free kill? And like I said, this isn't goldfish, but we're going to try to learn. Okay, same thing here. What is Chromie going to accomplish? What is Chromie going to accomplish? The only thing that's going to happen is she's going to die. And this is why I used to not like playing support. I've gotten more comfortable with it, and now I'm a pretty good support. But you cannot cure your team of poor decision making so don't enable your teammates to go in there ping that retreat let them know you know she's gonna and if I were you goldfish I wouldn't have wasted your ultimate there because she's gonna die anyway and now you just gave up your ultimate to boot so your team just fed them two free kills He's right, that you needed everyone to go. <clears throat> but is that on everybody or Murden and Alarak? How long were the three of you up here wailing on that boss? How long does it take before you realize that they're not coming? Once they're not coming, just leave, right? Yes, maybe they should have been up there if that was the team call, but they obviously weren't coming, so just leave. Yes, it's on your teammates for not showing up, but it's also on you for continuing to make the decision that was needed, that, that you guys needed them for. It's like if there's an objective and there's only three people on your team that show up and you die fighting for the objective and the team gets the objective anyway, 
should your teammates have been there? Of course they should have been there. Of course your teammates should have been there. But you also should have realized that they weren't there and not taken the five on three in the first place. So should your teammates have helped with the boss? Yes. But also you should have realized that they weren't coming and gotten out of there. And this is wrong. Chromie is not the most important. The only thing Chromie can do is throw her W down every 13 or 14 seconds or whatever. Chromie has very little impact on bosses um, of any sort. So that's not accurate. Mm. She is not a very good Siege character. All right, so it looks like, every, and, and you guys should notice, Zul was in the top lane, and he hearth back. So you guys will have an advantage here for about 10 seconds or so. Oh, never mind, Chromie's late too, so you guys are five on four. Missed attainment strike there, and don't use it on Johanna anyway. Oh, that's, that's not good, you're gonna get toasted there. Now that Crystal Aegis was nice to dodge the blizzard. Luckily Alarak came back for you. Alarak definitely saved your bacon there. Chromie players. This is way too close to the enemy team. Chromie should be back over here somewhere. Her range is obscene. There's no reason to be this close to the enemy team. These, these fights, this whole game, have been so disjointed. And Lily was way, way late on the cups. Look at where Chromie is! Look at this! That's <laughs> so far forward. So you guys are gonna lose this. Maybe not. Kerrigan's still going strong. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. These fights are something else. There! So I was right, you guys are gonna lose this. Holy guacamole. These fights are really all over the place and really, really sloppy. Heroes. All right, so let's go look at our Aureal. So the one thing I haven't seen this game that I'd like you to, when you're healing, you need to keep your healing priorities in, a, in, in order. In this case, it's the melee assassins. You really want to prioritize the melee assassins. Keep them going. Kerrigan, in particular, puts so much pressure on the enemy team if she's alive. I mean, these fights have been all over the place, and that's really hard as Aureal in particular because she kind of wants things to say clump. She wants her team to be clumped up for her heals a little bit. So these like scattered all over the place team battles, it really make things difficult for Ariel to decide where to go. The out member melee assassins, good heal on Alarak, good heal on Alarak. Nice job. While Kerrigan is right, this kind of comments in the game aren't really productive. Oh, Chromie. So Chromie's, Chromie's, Chromie's. Chromie's range is about double Jaina's. Unless she went the extended range. Did she? Oh, she did. Okay, so I take it back. Maybe a little bit of a surprise factor there. Because Chromie should never be in Jaina's normal blizzard range. This is decision making. Do not engage this. Murden is incorrect. There is never a situation in competitive, basically, where Avatar is not better than Ultimate. Avatar, when you're a solo tank especially, is pretty much always better than Haymaker. Careful. Well, it's not useless, but Avatar is way better. This is what you do... Oh my goodness. Do not face check bushes as a squishy. And look at the map. Why? 
<clears throat> as a team, you guys shouldn't have been moving forward anyway because this is what you guys see on the map. You have no idea where anybody is other than you know Muradin is at the bottom and you know the other team is probably up here. What I will guess is going to happen is you guys are going to lose both of these top ones and Muradin is going to get this bottom one. That's what I would guess. Go on the safe side. Be safe. Yeah, you're in trouble. Yeah, you guys are all toast. Every single one of you is toast. Well, at least Chromie's finally listening to me and staying a safe distance away. But by Muradin, by you guys going forward aggressively without your tank there, you, you conceded these top two um, altars. Oh, you're still going strong, Goldfish. Nicely done. I don't see your crown out, though. This is a big deal. You, are, you do not have a crown out. How are you going to build up your energy to heal if you don't have a crown? There it is. I'm perfect, perfect. You don't need two of you to channel. One of you should be helping over here. Nice. Way to, way to come off and try to help. But, I mean, that first team fight was was just a disaster for you guys. It was just a disaster. You're five on three now. There goes Chromie. Oh, nice detainment strike. You almost kept Chromie up. That was probably the best detainment strike I've seen from you this game. Um, almost kept Chromie up. But once again, making decisions. Why? Why are you guys going forward? See why? Don't. Okay, so every time there's a team engagement, you need to be evaluating what you hope to accomplish by it and what the situation is. And that evaluation needs to be quick because you don't really have time to think about it. So we're going to do that here. We're going to go back just a little bit and we're going to take a look at this engagement. Okay, so you guys. So Chromie's going to die here. Enough of this. Now, as the so, so hit, this is where this starts going wrong. I, I know, Kodaitis. This is very um, sloppy. Um, just on both teams, the way things are kind of all over. So now, as a support hero, you have the least control over what your team does strategically because you kind of have to go with the flow. So if I am Goldfish, I am pinging Retreat. Retreat, retreat, retreat. There's five of them, and there's three of you, and they're up two levels. So what's the best thing that can happen here? All three of you don't die is the best thing that can happen. Well, and furthermore, there's not even an objective to fight over anymore. I thought one of these was still up, but there's not even an objective to fight over here anymore. So Alarak and Kerrigan and Goldfish, our hero today, are going to go in and aggressively take a five on three. We, I mean, we've already seen what happens, but anybody can look at this and tell you how this is going to go, and it's going to go that blue team is going to win this fight. Now, somebody pinged retreat there, which is good. And mine, and mine, I don't know which team it was. <laughs> okay, so you guys got Lily. You got False Dad. And the rest of you got wiped. That is You're 100% right, Kodaitis. That if I tell people, I say and I've actually I've said that before too. The number one thing you can do to get better is to die less. Focus on not dying. That was a two for three in the other team's favor, and that was good. That was like, I mean, you guys took a five on three and killed two people. That actually went well, and you still lost. I mean, the decision-making um, for both teams has not been very good. Like, this is a terrible decision. <laughs> Why would you start the boss with a Johanna with 30% life, let's say. No healer. I mean, this is not going to go well. I would be shocked if they got this. Look at how fast Johanna's getting burned down. They're not going to be able to finish this. 
Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they started it. You could... <laughs> you know, and this is why when people say, you know, oh, I can't carry, you can absolutely carry out of these lower leagues. And it comes down to decision making. You know, I know Hero League can be like herding cats sometimes, but really use those pings. Give your teams the right idea. Sometimes players are looking for direction. You would be surprised how often if you aggressively ping decisions, people just kind of start going with it. So if you can make the right decisions and get your team on the same page, that's a really big deal. Okay, this is... No, you guys aren't going to be able to take this either. A Chromie and a Muradin. Somebody's pinging a treat, and whoever's having a ping, peek here's got the right idea. No, no, okay, no. <clears throat> I don't mind, actually, Chromie throwing damage in here, but why is she going forward? Chromie can sit back here and throw spells in blindly if you're going to do it, but now she's going to get caught in a Ring of Frost, and if they choose to, they will kill Chromie. Luckily, <laughs> Jaina foolishly ran through the slowing sands and got pounded on by the boss the entire time. Unless Zul steps up here to tank this boss, Jaina's going to die. Now, the one thing that little adventure did is you guys prevented Blue Team from capturing the boss, and Jojo here is grossly out of position, and Zul and Jaina are both going to have to hearth back. So I, I, you guys should pick Joe here. It was sloppy what Muradin and Chromie did there, but it actually got the job done. And now, Red Team is in primo position to get both of these top altars as Johanna won't be up for 20 to 30 seconds after this altar spawns. Where is Chromie going? <laughs> she needs to be up here with her team. This gives blue team a four, well, no, because Jojin is going back, but. That's a nice blizzard by a low life Jaina. All right, red should really clean this up. I don't know what Jaina was doing. Good gust. Let's see if. There you go. There you go. I thought they would too, Koditis. I absolutely thought they would. Once again. Know when to get out. Jaina is only going to die by staying here. She needs to leave. Nope, nope, nope. Jaina, what are you doing? Oh my goodness. So don't go in 1v4 when you're a Jaina with no life. If you learn anything from today's stream. Now, that just completely turned this game. Because not only, for the record, do the boss first. Do the boss first and then get the shrine. Or get a fort up here and then do the shrine. But, I mean, you guys have so much time here, so I would like to either see I this boss, or actually, this is so low, you might even be able to do all three. You can get this fort, get the boss, and channel this. So let's see what they do. Once again, they're not doing it all together. You cannot two-man this boss. You cannot two-man the boss. Kerrigan is leaving, he's channeling, Chromie's getting this top fort all over the place. Look at this, I think, did he get, he channeled while Chromie was getting the fort, so if he actually finished it before the fort was dead, he made Chromie just waste all of our time on that top fort. Chromie actually has the right idea here, let's see. Let's see what goes first. Look, they finished the channel before, right? So this is going to go down to 12. If it goes down to 12 instead of 11, Alarak made a boo-boo. Yep. He needed to wait. It wasn't even a full second. If he would have waited one more second, he would have gotten a fifth shot on it. Now Chromie is done here. Chromie needs to come help with the boss. I know I said she doesn't do much, and she doesn't, but still be down here with your teammates trying to help. Now, Goldfish, when you use this heal that's coming up, I want to see you pull around here and hit all three of you with it. 
Okay, at least you got two. But there was no reason not to hit yourself with it at the same time. Maximize. Maximize those heals. All right, now if red team loses this by one shot, we know the moment this game turned. Either way though, through uh, some good luck and some bad decision making, red team is now absolutely in the driver's seat this game. Don't solo a camp, don't solo the camp. Come over here and help carry in this one. So, okay, Alarex here. That's fine. Then. Yeah. There you go. Hit both of you. That's a nice maximized heal there. So once again, every time there's an engagement, we want to evaluate the engagement. So we should be looking at the minimap right now and our team should realize our primary source of damage, probably the team's highest damage dealer, I would guess. So look at this, far and away, the team's highest damage dealer is up here. That means this engagement from red team's perspective should never happen, furthermore, Look where our tank is, and we have our healer up here in the midst of three, four enemy teammates. Okay, you guys do get the pick on Jaina, which is awesome. But there goes Alarak. Almost. That by the, oh, by the, you know what? I should have noted. Goldfish, that was an excellent Crystal Aegis. That was a really good Crystal Aegis. I don't think it's going to matter in the end, because now you guys are three on two. Chromie is just, just now getting into the neighborhood. I'll tell you why you guys won that, at least partially, or will. You cannot fight with your back to an enemy tower. That whole time, blue team had their back to an enemy tower. So you guys went into a pretty poor engagement and ended up two for two, which is not bad. You did get their healer, which is good. So we'll see how this goes. I think I think uh, red team is still in the prime position here because everybody on blue had to hearth back and actually everybody on red had to hearth back too. This will be interesting to see how this goes. And the thing is, by the way, I'm gonna point this out right here. Remember earlier I said that one shot? So earlier, if at Alarak would have waited one more second, Blue's core health would be at five, and then they could end on one of these altars instead of needing both. That's a big deal. So if Alarak would have waited that one second, Red Team only needs one of these to win the game. Now, Kerrigan actually has a good idea here. You guys don't need both of these. Red team doesn't need both. And the reason that bottom will be an easier one for you guys to secure is that blue team has nowhere to run to safely with this fort behind them. That makes it much easier for you guys to secure this bottom one. However, once again, it looks like not everyone on the same page. Although Kerrigan's dead, so it doesn't really matter what she says. Blue team is going to be up before you guys, though, so you want to secure one of these fast. The Once again, where's Murden? He's way up here. Tank players, be in front of your team. The enemy team should always hit the tank first. If the enemy team engages directly onto the back line, unopposed, the tank is not doing their job. And 
At this point, you have to retreat. Muradhan's not up for another 65 seconds, and their whole team is up. So at this point, red team needs to just leave. They only have three bell towers. You're not going to lose the game if you give it up, so just back up, regroup. Now, the reason I don't like that particular Crystal Aegis is because you're still at pretty full health. You have a lot of energy, and it made you stop. And now you're kind of in the middle of the entire enemy team. Falstad's probably going to die, but you're going to be in primo attack range here for all three of these blue team members right here. And this is... We're going to... I just talked about tanking, so... Tank players. Especially Johanna. Johanna doesn't do any damage. So that means Johanna's job is to protect her backline almost exclusively. So right. Okay. So Johanna ends up chasing Ariel all the way up here. First of all, Ariel has very low life. So Johanna's not going to kill Ariel. And in the process of chasing Ariel all the way up to this top sign leaves Jaina completely exposed to the one character she really can't get away from. Once Arya was driven away, Johanna needs to get back over here. Because our uh, Johanna has the tools to deal with Kerrigan, the blinds, the slow, the stun, and that will allow Jaina to get back safely and put damage on the Kerrigan through... put damage on the Kerrigan through Johanna. So instead, watch. See, look. Look at where Jaina is. Johanna needs to be back over here. Or Jaina needs to be down here or down here. When Jaina was here, this way. Be safe, boys and girls. See, yeah, that's not going to work. Jaina's going to die. There she goes. Cups popped a little bit late. They're keeping Johanna and Zul up. Murn and his picking on Kerrigan here. Always late to the objectives. Kerrigan just spawned just spawned. Yeah, that could have that could have been a misclick. So red, even though they got obliterated there, channeled both and secured both of those shrines. Now, what should red team do here? If I were red team, you can push both of these mercs through. That's cool. I would probably take both of these bell towers. You're going to have blue running around the whole rest of the game trying to come back. Remember, once you capture six bell towers, it's three shots at the tail. This is good. You guys are walking the mercs in. Nice job. Perfect. And then you've got one more batch of pumpkins that's way back here. I think the enemy team will be up in time to defend us. And Le yeah, Lily needs to be back here waiting. There's no reason for her to be forward. No reason for her to be forward. Yeah, the red or blue team will be up in time to try to defend this. And look, once again, red team just not on the same page. What is what is Muradin doing? <laughs> what is Chromie doing? These three pumpkin sappers are the win. And they're not anywhere near anything. I know, I think one of them got this bell tower here, but they could easily be down here. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I'm, I'll say it once, I'll say it again. Don't fight 1v3. Okay, now he needs to fight in there. If uh, We need to see if Falstad has gust up. Well, apparently it's not letting me check that. But if Falstad has Gust up, this is when you Gust Red Team away to get the Pumpkin Sappers dead. There you go. It's not GG, Alarak. Now instead, you guys have a three-on-three -three with Chromie doing your own thing in the top lane, and this whole blue team is going to be here to defend this. Maybe. But, I mean, this is the game, right, Giggle? This is the game, man. So you got to be here to, to win this game. Yep. Who said GG? It is absolutely not GG yet. Those pumpkin sappers are dead. Oh, 
There's Lily propping his team up through the team fight. Good heal, oh, heal, 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 heal. Oh, that was a good, good heal. Now look at it. You think Chromie might have made a difference? Now it's not gonna matter because she got the pumpkin sappers. The pumpkin sappers are gonna take this building and they'll get the three shots on core, but the game could already be over. If Chromie gets this top tower here, the game is over. But she's tanking the tower shots. Wow. So game's not over. The altars have risen. Blue team absolutely hanging on by the skin of their teeth. So blue team, if I'm blue team, you channel this altar, you get your two shots, and then look what's up in 14 seconds. Actually, in a perfect world, you have a lot of time here. Maybe you get one of these buildings back in the channel. Probably not quite that much time. But if you do this, if you get this channel here and you get the boss, you're going to have one core hit point for red team left and three for blue, and this thing is going to come down to the wire. Yeah, Kedaitis, this game was really rough. For sure, really, really rough. And this is a good move by Zul. Just wait for reinforcements. Yeah, I don't know what Chromie is doing here. She's not going to accomplish anything. Just get out alive. Now, Blue doesn't have time to boss. So they need to be taking these towers over. I mean, they're both both of these two are really, really low. They could clean these two up really fast. I am lord of this realm, and it will not There you go. Okay, now they need to go clean up bottom. And then we have a whole new game. Well, it looks like we're gonna have a fight over boss to end this game. This was a very aggressive move by Alarak. We're gonna look at that. I know it doesn't seem like much, but it is. So let's go on to the vision. Okay, so here's Mer here's we're on Red Team's vision right now. So right now, you know where they're at. You know, and look, they're posturing up this way, right? Are we already on Red Team's Vision? Okay, yes, we are. Okay, so he did know where they were at. If he didn't know where the enemy team was, you don't want to be face-checking bushes. Definitely don't want to be face-checking bushes. But they had vision on them, so that wasn't that big a deal. Okay, once again, we have a team fight starting, and we're going to go ahead and evaluate. We're at same level. Both teams are all present oh no they're not no they're not because who is off nowhere to be found again chromie so red team needed to wait on this engagement alarak starts this engagement without chromie here and that's a mistake Nice Crystal Ages. Really, really good Crystal Ages. Chromie, fi Wait. Chromie is finally here, and she's fighting under the boss's aggro. This whole t All of his damage to Chromie is from the boss wailing on her. Don't take free damage. That's a big deal. Do not take free damage. Okay, so Chromie's going to die to Falstad here. Okay, the boss attacks whoever's closest to it. So Falstad was way too close. Just back up. And like I said, this boss hits like a freight train. An absolute freight train. Now, Lili needs to tank this. The next up to tank is Lili. Lili is really squirrely. She's surprisingly resilient. Now we have both teams 
I have no idea what aggroed the boss, Giggle, but whatever it was was not good. I know your teammates told you to solo the camp, but Ariel cannot solo camps. Don't solo camps as Ariel. Look, this is level 23, and she can't solo camps. Chromie is correct. They should have waited for a few seconds for her to get there, but she also needs to just be there. She's been chronically late this whole game. And once again, I said it earlier, that's both sides. The main component of the team should have realized Chromie wasn't there yet, and Chromie should have already been there. That's on both of them. See, and this is why. This is a problem. You tried to solo the camp, which Ariel cannot do. We've established at level 20. If you can't solo a camp at level 23, you can't solo a camp ever. And now you have maybe the game defining moment right here. And you've got a hearth back because you're low on life. Yeah, Alarak initiated that and he shouldn't. Blue team's problem, and if, you, if we watch this again, the only reason Blue Team is losing these fights here is because they are allowing jo or a Kerrigan to do the same thing. She dives in and pops her Maelstrom. She dives in and pops her Maelstrom. Johanna and Zul in particular need to be focused on Kerrigan. Bone Prism, attack speed slows, blind slows. If you don't let Kerrigan get in the middle of all of your team with that Maelstrom, she is going to die. But repeatedly, they've let Kerrigan dive on the back line pretty much unopposed and pop Maelstrom. It's been very predictable, actually, but nobody on blue team has made the adjustment. And that's the only reason why red team has been getting anything done in these engagements is that initial Kerrigan burst. And look, you almost got caught there. My goodness. So the... Oh, never mind. This is going to be dead. Blue team is going to be here first. They are going to have a friendly fort behind them. And this altar fight is going to win the game. And look. Look at where blue team is. One, two, three, four, five. Everybody is here at the shrine. Johanna is a little low on life. But other than that... Full health, full mana, full health, full mana, full health, full mana. And you have your two squishy, vulnerable melee assassins here. The tank, as usual, is in the back. You had to hearth back for life. Chromie, as usual, way in the back, nowhere to be found. Um, this is gonna, I'm very interested to see how this goes out, and I bet you... Muradin's right. Wait for the whole team. However, you can't wait too long if they start to channel. So let's see if they actually wait. Nope, Kerrigan is not waiting. Muradin is right. He should begin the fight. Also, I, I've been pounding on Muradin this game for this. Johanna needs to be up here. Johanna, up here. Muradin's actually in the right place this time. Up here. Tanks in front. Tank players, you want to catch the enemy team. You do not want your squishies to catch the enemy team. Zul should actually be up here because Zul's the other frontliner, right? The front line for blue team is Zul and Johanna, so they need to be right here. Oh, oh no. Oh no. You know, I, huh. you've had a fairly clean game, Goldfish. A fairly clean game. And that was a mistake. And I'll show you what the mistake was. It was, I'm pretty sure you're showing. Are you showing? Let's see. Oh, nope. Actually, I take it back. That was just terrible timing. However, Muradin did say he's going to start the fight, and you started going forward before Muradin did. Also, some bad timing here, but you got to let your tank initiate. There was no reason for you to be stepping forward. Let your tank initiate. That's his job. That's his job. And this is going to be terrible for red team. A little bit of good fortune for blue team, but you going forward, there was a big deal. Now, I will say Lili, I think, is the only person on blue team who has adjusted for Kerrigan. Look at how early Lili pops cups because Kerrigan has just been diving this whole game. And the front line of the blue team has just not been accounting for it. Johanna's up here. When you take Falling Sword as Johanna, which is why I don't like taking it, 
you disappear from the map. So now Johanna is not on the map, and there's no front line allowing Kerrigan free dive. Free dive on the back line. And Lily made the adjustment and popped cups early, hoping that her teammates will come and keep her alive. Nice ring of frost. Great ring of frost by Jaina. That cups was definitely, definitely the difference. And blue team's going to win this game. So the two differences in that last team fight was Lily making the adjustment to the diving Kerrigan and popped cups really, really early. And how many, I mean, she must have kept up two or three of her teammates through the cups. Um, and then, of course, our poor, poor Ariel getting caught out with the gust. There was definitely um, a little bit of a miscue by our hero stepping forward. He shouldn't have done that. But the gust was a little bit lucky. I think all he was trying to do was Zul was channeling. All he was trying to do was gust everybody away to give Zul time to channel. They just got lucky and caught Ariel out. So that was kind of both sides of it. Ariel went forward when she shouldn't have, and it was also a little bit of a lucky gust as well. I don't know what... So let's talk about this game. 44 kills to 36 kills... This game was an absolute blood bath. So, things you did well. Goldfish, one of the things you did well, if you look at the deaths, you can see it right there. You did not die nearly as much as your teammates did. And your positioning, to be honest, wasn't spectacular, so you were squirrely, which is great. The couple things that I would work on that I took from this game is if you're going to support, you really need to pick who you're going to prioritize. You could see Kerrigan. When Kerrigan dove that deep and she put all that pressure on them, she's your primary healing target. Now, Kerrigan, in a number of these instances, went too deep for you to follow her. I mean, you, you can only do so much. You know, if Illidan dives to the other side of the team, you can't follow him. So when Kerrigan dove too deep, your second priority was Alarak. So Keep in mind your healing priorities. It's generally your melee assassins. They're the ones that need the most love from the healers. They're the ones that need the most support from their teammates to really thrive. So focus on healing priorities. Which of your teammates are going to be in the most position to take a lot of damage and not be able to deal with it, right? Your tanks probably aren't going to get damage uh, or the healing priority because almost all the tanks in the game have some sort of self-healing. So know who your healing targets are. Your detainment strikes need a little bit of work. Um, there, were, there were a couple of them that weren't good, a couple of them that were, but really hone in on that detainment strike. That detainment strike is such a good tool for Ariel, and I, I think the good diff the, one of the biggest differences between a good Ariel player and a great Ariel player is how often they change team fights with those detainment strikes. And I only saw one that I remember off the top of my head, one game or a battle changing detainment strike. That's what you want. So work on those detainment strikes, work on your healing prioritization, and then also with Ariel specifically, maximizing that group heal, right? There were a couple of them where you could have easily gotten maybe one more person in that area of effect, um, and you wanna do those. So work on those group heals, maximize those heals as much as possible. In the late game, other than that misclick, I think that I think it was a misclick, you Crystal Aegis yourself. But you had a couple of really great Crystal Aegises late in the game. And then the last thing we would do, and this isn't specific to Ariel, is try to take ownership of your team when they're making a bad decision. And there were a lot of bad team decisions in this game. When your team is making a bad decision, try to lead them. Ping retreat. Use those pings. Try to get your team moving in the right direction. So uh, thanks for submitting the replay. Um, I will email you the YouTube to it. I put all my stuff up on YouTube. And thanks to the chat for hanging out for our Bronze Age Episode 6. I will not have a stream next week because I will be out of town. But in two weeks, I will be doing two reviews. So we'll have double the fun in two weeks. It's looking like tomorrow, maybe, I will be casting some Share League playoffs, Division 2 playoff games. So join me for that if you'd like. That game is at 7 o'clock. I think I will end up casting it. So everyone have a wonderful evening. 
We'll see you in the Nexus.